I'm, I'm sure you've heard of the famous saying, uh, design is an international language. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if that international language does not represent our culture, our design thinking, our design theories and how we, you know, you approach it and I right. approach. And if that is missing, you can't keep arguing the point that design is an international language. Hey, what's going on, Jomo? How you doing? How are you? Nice Bang. to finally nice. meet you. Same here. Thank you. Um, I'm Bang Ivan Paler. I'm the CEO of Models Inc. and a fashion pioneer here in Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm Jomo Tariku. I'm based out of here in uh, Springfield, Virginia, right outside of D.C. I'm an industrial designer and furniture. Uh, furniture is my core. Okay, okay. I'm glad to hear that because I may need some few pieces myself <laughs> before we leave. <laughs> Uh, so, Bang, who and uh, what inspired you to begin uh, your work in design and fashion? Oh, wow. Um, it's always been um, a big thing in my family. Um, fashion has been a part of our life since I was a young boy. Um, I come from a um, heavy-oriented fashion family. Um, my mother, um, Joanne, and my aunt, um, Gloria, were really, really, really into it. So it kind of, like, cultivated around me as a young child just looking up to them and seeing the different things that they were into and the different pieces and the fur coats and things they would just bring in the house just so wow me. It made me feel like we were rich, but we were really still in the projects. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was that experience that really, really made me feel like that. It opened my eyes to a lot of different things. Uh, then uh, in your opinion, how does the fashion industry uh, treat the expression of black identity on a grand scale? Um, I would say early on when I first got into it, probably like graduated from high school, it was at a different lens. I think the strives that a lot of the young black designers and people who have been in the fashion industry of African-American descent have kind of like pushed the culture a little forward. Mm -hmm. But it's always a never ending fight to get our voices heard and just our point of view heard through that kind of scale. When we really are the base and the belly of the fashion scale. Yeah. I feel like we are um, the color that actually gets painted on the canvas of fashion. And you really can't have it without us being a part of the conversation. So that's basically my take on that with that delivery. Who and what inspired you to begin your work in industrial design? Like that whole element, open up about that. I wish I had a, a very short uh, answer to that because it's been the way I got into it was uh, more of a discovery process for me. Okay. Uh, I grew up in, uh, I was born in Kenya, uh, but I grew up in Ethiopia. I didn't know what industrial design was actually when I came to the U.S. to attend college. Okay. And it was introduced to me by a professor at the University of Kansas uh, on a simple tour uh, down a hallway of the art and design program. Uh, after that, though, I, I ended up uh, doing my thesis on African furniture, uh, modern African furniture, and that's how I slowly transitioned. Yes, I did study industrial design, uh, but that's how I kind of progressed. As a kid, wow. though, my dad was also a, a collector of various items in the house, so the interest mm -hmm. of design and drawing objects was into me already before you know I discovered industrial design that made me transition and reflect back on these objects that I grew up with, you know. African stools and uh, various carvings within within our home. Got you, got you. How have you seen black design movements treated by the industry? Well, I, one of the biggest struggles that I had, even when I did my thesis in African furniture, and, and, and this is back in 92, 93, uh, and while I was doing my research uh, in the library uh, at our university, I wouldn't see any black designers represented in these books. Uh, forget books, just publications, design magazines didn't have us included in here. And it actually gave me the impetus to work on this and see within my, you know, limited window of furniture mm -hmm. that I wanted to pursue if I can solve this problem. So we've been missing in the canon. Uh, we're still missing in the canon. When I say canon is where we, we get recorded and uh, preserved for the... Uh, for the, you know, as long as human beings exist in this and going forward historically to be in institutions like this, the library we're sitting in, right. museums, galleries, uh, where 
our work and contribution actually are recorded. So I, I've seen trouble with this. It's something our, uh, you know, I'm wearing it right on my right. on my hoodie where the Black Artists and Designers Guild is working on making sure that Canon changes. This includes us. And this is where we can pass on to the, uh, you know, the kids we were just talking about before sure. we started shooting. You know, if they don't see this, they won't aspire to it and, you know, also carry the culture forward. Correct. You said that you were inspired by it being African design. Like, tell us, did the furniture tell a story based off the angles and the shape of the design? Like, I'm interested in knowing that. What makes it African furniture design? Uh, well, I, I do look into the history of these objects. Uh, I always reflect on where I came from, from the continent and obviously my own country. Mm. And then anything from there, it could be the color, it could be the, the food, the hairstyle, the clothing, uh, patterns, uh, scarifications on your skin, the architecture, uh, pre-existing, obviously, furniture and so on are always my basis. And they, those are my jumping station. Yes. How does black culture inform you your work uh, as a designer? It's everything. Um, everything that I design comes from like the black experience, the black aspect, from the textures of the fabric, from the shapes, from the flow, from the cut of the pattern. Because when you design for African-American bodies, it's already a different mm -hmm. kind of experience. So just the shape of designing for women or for African-American man's shoulders, um, our build and our structure is totally different than any other race. So it creates a whole experience of when you're just constructing for us and definitely when it's by us. Got it, very good point. Uh, how does Models Inc. create more opportunities uh, for black models and performers from DC? Oh, wow. Um, um, that was my primary goal um, initially when I set out to start it. Um, it opens up an outlet or a plug so that young adults and youth and participants of Washington, D.C. can actually have a connect from New York to L.A. to be able to, I guess you can say, embark on any journey in fashion, entertainment, or the arts that they want mm -hmm. by us being the pillar of the community. It opens up um, the floodgates what they initially wouldn't have access to, they're able to get that through us. And um, by us staying in DC, it just eliminates all of that part that keeps them out or closes the door on them. It op actually opens the door for them to be able to get their foot through and be seen. Got it, got so, it. So what impact does exclusion have on black design? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of the famous saying, uh, design is an international language. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if that international language does not represent our culture, our design thinking, our design theories and how we, you know, you approach it and I right. approach uh, and how we incorporate what we grew up with. And if that is missing, again, going back to this design canon issue, right. you can't keep arguing the point that design is an international language. Uh, there is a, a term that they've coined, uh, the global south. So the global south is everybody, uh, you know, kind of beneath, below the equatorial right. uh, line where, you know, a whole bunch of Africa is missing, other indigenous people from Asia and Australia are missing, and part of South America. So gotcha. in at least in uh, in in furniture design, there is a tendency that the Western approach of design is what is celebrated and we're missing. And whenever uh, black people's work are reflected, it's through the lens of what the Western culture thinks is good enough to be represented. So that's that also has results when, you know, when we were talking again before the filming about how, uh, you know, capital and money that we need to Correct. advance our causes is, is going to be also missing. Uh, we can't make a living out of what we love to do uh, every day. Through that lens that you spoke on, how do you think that black people see themselves through the world, through that lens? Well, you know, if, if your culture is missing uh, and is not celebrated, then I think that psychologically that has effect, yes? Uh, you, you think you don't have uh, things that you have contributed or your culture have contributed that's worth enough to celebrate and to actually base... Uh, a career out of these celebrations that could be part of art and design. So gotcha. I think it has a, a bigger effect than just, you know, okay, we're missing from this sector or that sector. 
it affects a whole movement. Mm -hmm. Do you think they see themselves as a part of that design? Well, if, if we continue what we're doing and what others before us have done and we pass on the torch, they will feel like they're part of it and is worthy of advancing the cause of, you know, when we, you and me leave this earth, somebody will take over this and proceed forward. But no. if people like us are not advocating that we're, we're part of this global uh, community, then at some point it could easily die and go away. And they will see Absolutely. it's not worth keeping. I agree. I definitely agree with that. What was the 1973 Battle of Versailles? And how does your work with models and continue the legacy of the black performers in the competition? Wow. So um, great question. That, that was a good question. Um, the Battle of Versailles was... Um, it started out first to be like a fundraiser mm. um, for the Palace of Versailles for a renovation project. Um, and it was basically a competition between the French designers in Paris and the American designers here from the States. Wow. Um, and we, we traveled from the States. Um, a couple of designers, Stephen Barrows, Halston, who was very big during that time in 1973. And they traveled over to Paris to compete against big names like Jimon Chi, Christian Dior, to see who wow, will win man. the title. And um, the element that stood out for us, because they had extravagant sets, they had um, Liza Minnelli doing the Broadway <laughs> piece, um, they had um, carriages and just state-of-the-art things um, ready to compete against us. And we came there in a jet just with clothes. So we really didn't have anything to give an extra showmanship to the production. But the black models were really mm -hmm. the base mm -hmm. of the actual essence. Mm -hmm. And they added that wow factor, which actually brought the garments and the clothes to life. Um, and we wind up coming out victorious with that battle and the United States won due to the soul yeah. and the African-American experience as a model. Um, they didn't bring the traditional stoic runway, which we see. Um, they actually bought flavor, dance, and movement, which actually brought the fabric and the clothes to life. And that's kind of like how what we do in Model Zinc to keep that alive we kind of like showcase the African-American model experience. We have our own story when it comes yes. to black models. Um, we do our own thing and we have proven that it works for us because we actually showed ourselves and won it and got the respect for all of the Caucasian designers in the States mm. who have actually built the empire off the backs of us. Yes. Because if we weren't um, present at that competition, we wouldn't got the exposure that bring all the exactly. attention back to America so that people like Ralph Lauren and Donna Curran could flourish like they are today. Yes. So um, we stay true to that foundation um, that was set from other people before us, like the Ebony Fashion Fair mm -hmm. um, and shows like that that feature African-American models. Um, so that's the grounds that we set on and we try to keep that alive through the arts and entertainment factor. Oh, what an amazing experience. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> As a founding member of the Black Artists and Design Guild, how does BADG resist the erasure of Black identity in your industry? Well, well one of the, we do a lot of advocacy work. Okay. And I, I think that kind of lays the ground that advocacy work does not only pertain to members only and what we produce, but it's about the uplifting of the uh, the black experience within design, within the, you know, we we're not only an an American thing or a North American thing. We're a global thing. Right. We have members from uh, uh, the continent of Africa, from the Caribbean, from uh, the wow. U.S. and uh, Canada, all the way to uh, you know different places and cities uh, that right. covers this. Uh, so I'll go back to what I said about the canon. We 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 strongly encourage our members and others to do documentation. We do a lot of uh, this. We engage museums to, to start, you know, if you, you probably have noticed as of late the last three years, there is definitely a pressure uh, on, on, on museums to increase collection of black art Correct. and design. And I've, obviously I'm one of those beneficiaries of this increased interest in collecting works of art from uh, black creatives. 
uh, so by by doing uh, a decent amount of advocacy, uh, I I personally have also done data research to to highlight the issues right. because data can speak more than um, sometimes emotional uh, reaction to uh, actual things that are happening. So we use a combination of data, recording our own history, advocacy, making shows. We do shows for uh, for our own uh, members. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually started. Uh, dishing out uh, grants to black creatives, to our own members, okay. and to others, uh, to be honest with you, to, no, to sign up. And we make a stipulation, like we were discussing earlier, <laughs> that these grants have to tie with uh, the black experience. And right. you get to define what that black experience is, but it's to encourage people to work around that and to make sure we continue, even if institutions work against us, we will at least have archiving capabilities to continue this work to say, okay, maybe this route didn't work, but we've done our homework, Correct. so we're keeping this. No, so speaking of the Black experience, you recently brought the Black experience to the big screen. Yeah. Let's really talk <laughs> about how it felt to have your pieces featured in the 2022 Wakanda Forever movie. Like, how was that, and how did you showcase the different black cultures through those particular pieces so just to be i'm one of many artists they used or let's say designers that they acquired work from right so this has been a fantastic experience for me as a designer uh it was also uh, an eye-opener because i've never worked with a movie studio to produce you know props that they'll end up using in a movie but but also on the flip side i, I learned how secretive uh these uh, large productions are right. uh, to a point I didn't know where they were going to use my work. And I, like everybody else, I had to sit down and just watch wait. the movie and be <laughs> pointing to my own kids. Oh, it's, it's like, okay, dad, we want to watch the movie. So, so for like, everyone that's going to be uh, watching this interview, like what scene did you actually yeah, see? So it's very difficult to actually to pinpoint where I am. But during the flood, flooding sequence, uh, if you see, there's a dome structure in the back where you can see the actual uh, uh, blue screenshot on my Instagram. But I, as a uh, as a designer, you know, I'm I'm just generally happy. I, I can say, hey, I, I I played a tiny role in there. In one of the biggest African American movies of yes. the year. Yeah. How how did they find you? It was, it was even though it feels like it was a simple email. Uh, I had the chance to. Um, to work on a project at, uh, at the Met in New York where the designer of this uh, installation was Hannah Bickler from Black, you know, the Black Panther, the, uh, the you know, Academy Award designer. And I had a chance to meet her there. But prior to that is, uh, you know, I received this email, but that project preceded uh, Black Panther. So gotcha. I kind of made the connection, but again, because of the NDA I signed, even when I met her at the Met, I didn't even raise this issue because there are people around us. Right. Uh, but I, I think she probably ended up saying, hey, I like his work. I've already selected him for the Met installation I worked on. She probably said to her set designers, you know, use Jomo. And they ended up using yeah. 14 of my items. So, oh, wow. Uh, 14 is a really, really yeah. big deal. <laughs> yes. To a black artist that's like trying to be a creative, like, what's the money in this? Like, how is this a industry where you can actually be sustainable to live? Well, specifically providing to the movie industry wouldn't be, but um, things have been looking up for me after 30 years of struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, I have actually quit my day job and have proceeded to do this full time because I see the, I guess, the light at the end of the tunnel finally. Right. Yes. Uh, but again, you know, I, I don't want this to be about only me and my perspective. I want it to be larger in the teaching and workshops and lecturing and even having sessions like that, like this is just as important as being involved in a, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity of being part of a movie. The day I pass away, I hope I, I can say I've contributed in the change of the canon, either by the data research work that I'm doing, right. exposing the industry's problematic areas, uh, advocating, uh, advocating for other designers. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a culture that said, you know, it, 
I know here in the U.S. you say uh, it takes a village to raise uh, somebody. And us is like, you know, it's, it's a rising tide. If I get to promote you, you get to promote me. Others do the same thing. This issue that we're having about exposing our own work to our own people, plus, right. the again, I go back to the global language, then the problem will be solved. And I hope I've, if I can change something in there, I'd be happy. What is the mark that you would like to uh, leave on the Black community? Um, I would like to leave that you could really be anything that you want to be. And no matter what challenges you have stacked against you, yes. whatever race you are, you could definitely overcome it and be exactly what you want to be through hard work, drive, and consistency. So I want um, my legacy and people of my culture to live by that and go after their dreams. Very true. What does black resistance mean to you? It means to never give up. It means to fight against anything that's suppressing you to overcome it. Yeah. And just always come out on top, no matter what the challenge may be. Same for you. What does black resistance mean to you? Oh, wow. It's going to be very hard to add to uh, what you just said. It's, it's pretty similar. I mean, my life is about persistence. This is something I want to pass on to my own kids, you know, uh, persistence, um, family, uh, raising everybody to learn about you, you to get to learn about you, uh, mm -hmm. others uh, is, is what uh, black resistance means to me. And always, always be uh, proud of where you come, you came from. It's, it's not about uh, one is better than the other, but if you see your culture is not being, or your heritage is not being celebrated the right way, to educate people so all of us are doing well. And we have actually a robust and colorful uh, community than just only a specific way of looking at things. What do you think about the architecture of this actual space that we're in, the library? <laughs> like, what do you think about the build? The architect is actually from Ghana. Oh, so, wow, I did not know that. Yes, it, it just... I want to know your perspective on that. Like, what first, do you think? First of all, you know, I'm I'm a, a mod modernist and love modern uh, uh, buildings and all the lights. It, it's very uh, conducive to mm -hmm. reading and learning. And then it, there's nothing like finding out. I, I, as an African, a black designer, seeing successful and accomplished designers work built, not sketched only, but right. you know, like you having your moving your work from sketch to finish in the experience you just shared with me uh, in Versailles. Right. Uh, you know, it, 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 what, it brightens up your day. It's, it's what you want to hear. And the reason you keep saying we want to be part of the canon. Uh, so this is part of the canon. It's not only he came up with the idea. Correct. He actually uh, manifested it. Yes, and his name is David... Ajay. Oh, Ajay, yeah. Yeah, Ajay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. He actually um, designed it. Wow, I like it. I, like, I love the light. I love the shape, the different angles yeah. that it has, the adjacentness. So it's like everywhere you look, you can actually feel the light coming exactly. in. So it's almost like an outdoor end yes. kind of feel. So I definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. I did not know. Yeah. The only project of his I know is the... African American yeah. History and Culture Museum, which is a fantastic building by itself. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If someone was trying to get in contact with you, like, where can they find you? Like, give them the information. Like, how can they find you? Um, Instagram, as usual, is the best, uh, at Jomo Tariku. Uh, if not, Jomo uh, JomoFurniture.com. How about you? Girl, right. For me, they can um, go to www.modelsincdc.org or hit us up at Instagram at Models Inc. Or my personal Instagram, which is Bang500, and we'll definitely get back to you guys. Excellent. Thank you so much Thank for having this conversation with Have me, John Mo. It's nice meeting great. you. So glad you came out. Same and here. It's been a great time. I had a great time, too. Thank you, DC Library.